Oh, um, all right. Let me let me get to this now. So Casey, I don't know who heard it. You know, last week when Beetlejuice was here, but it was pretty funny. I thought it was one of the best Beetlejuice appearances of all time. Yes, excellent. Because Beetlejuice was going to perform. Where were you guys going? Arkansas, Little Little Rock, Arkansas. Place right. legend. <laughs> so, Casey explained on the air that he really needs money, and that's a whole other story that I yeah, should get into. Yeah, why he has such a great need. Yeah. So Casey, IRS. Casey does all these, you know, appearances and things. So Sean, who usually travels with Beetlejuice, you know, Sean takes care of Beetlejuice. And he couldn't go. So he said to Casey, you've got to take care of Beetlejuice for the weekend if you go. And Casey normally wouldn't do it, but he really needs the money. So, so he, he got extra money for doing this. Yeah, and Sean even sent a letter to Casey like, you know, if if you smell something weird coming out of Beetlejuice's <laughs> pants, <laughs> I should say, Beetlejuice, did you have an accident? You make uh -huh. a mistake. Oh, yeah, did you make a mistake? Right. That's what he knows. And, uh, and Beetle will say yes if he did. And then Beetle will take off his pants and his underpants and jump into the shower. <laughs> For Casey, he packed extra underpants for Beetlejuice. Right. And then, like, he had other things, like saying, you know, Beetlejuice is known to run off and disappear for days. So <laughs> Only give him money no for what he needs, because if you give him money, he'll just keep buying things. Or don't give him shots, because if you give Beetlejuice shots, he'll get too drunk. So what right. you Let do him is... have three beers. Three beers, and then the rest should just be, like, water and a little shot glass. Seltzer. Yeah, probably. seltzer. And he doesn't know the difference. He doesn't know the difference. And the other thing was, don't, don't, if you're, you know, hopefully you're in the room together, because if Beetlejuice is alone, he'll just call room service all night. Yeah, and to keep Beetle from running off, you have to just say to him, hey, there's girls up in the room. <laughs> if he's moody and doesn't feel like he wants to appear, you tell him there's girls after. Yeah, and, and when we had Beetle just in here, he was like, I'm not sharing my room with Casey. I'm not going to make any accidents. I don't want to be near Casey. I don't like Casey. I'm the boss. Yeah, it looked really like it was going to be a tough weekend. So what happened? You went this past weekend. And okay. You, yeah. All right, so. Uh, now, did you tape it? I don't know why the E-Crew didn't go with you. I, I am it. so livid with the yeah, E-Crew. Yeah, I thought we had said, yeah, it should be covered. I said to Doug Goodstein, I go, well, why didn't you guys cover it? He goes, um, well, I met with resistance from certain people. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe he doesn't want to pay for it or something. I go, you, you met with resistance from people? What are you talking about? He goes, certain people. So I go, Doug, what are you talking about? He goes, and he starts pointing to KC. I go, well, what did KC do? He didn't want you filming it? He goes, he didn't want to film it. I go, why? What, what, what is that? And, and so Casey says to me, I didn't want to film it because, you know, i got to take care of Beetlejuice. How can I hold the camera? Doug wanted Casey. To, if oh, Casey's the subject, send, uh... Casey's the subject, how could he film it? Yeah, we got to see Casey interacting right, yeah. with Beetlejuice. You so, want to see Casey. I said, what is he, Tommy Lee? He's going <laughs> to film it and be in it? No one's that good. Yeah, so... Uh, I got audio. Well, Doug, you know, the weird thing is that Doug will drop everything to go videotape girls right he'll be down at no some house there the dude i mean what, up the wrong tree here you might as well just stop why because the what i didn't tell you is that the decision to to what i told casey to bring her own camera or a still camera was after another decision was made and robin can come in can come in and tell you about that oh so so you so why didn't you tell me that because i had why do you ask four seconds Christmas? i had four seconds there was no force that you say he doesn't want to pay to go with kc i didn't have time to even say that it was i was on my well way you had out. time to t point to kc 500 yeah. times cryptically well i i mean also part of it was i was trying to get in touch with casey just to talk about everything and anything but we called his cell phone we called him at home and i called him here and i didn't get one return phone what call. is that about dude you and gotta then, be reachable and then, I, and then i talked to sean on thursday at uh the Ver to go blue party and i said if you talk to casey i'm just trying to reach him i want to talk to him about this um uh the appearance and he goes yeah i just talked to him like an hour ago i said well so you just weren't returning doug's call no 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 i got a i got a message saying we want you to take a uh, a camera so I, I didn't call him back i should have but casey call people back huh? don't call yeah, back sean so, I, mean, I just saw remember I, the the appearances aren't aren't the way you make a living you make a living here oh totally i know what so call back doug yeah but I, I thought that they would go down there and do what they had to do. I wasn't taking the camera. But they need to know when you're going. They no, no, no. All that information was done. Sean takes care of all that. I didn't oh. even know. I didn't know when I was leaving. So what is the real Thursday. answer, Doug? You're so uh, cryptic. Answer, I'm not cryptic. Do you guys not want to shoot it? Well, Robin can come in. Uh, well, I'm asking you. I, I wanted to shoot it. I wanted Robin to shoot said it. no, then. Yes. Oh, so then why were you pointing to KC saying no? Because 
he, uh, you know, okay, I was being cryptic. I was, just, it was, it was, it's I'm, don't I'm, act like you didn't have time. You just, and that KC was the block. I need to know these answers. We also had one day before, and the plane ticket was like almost two thousand dollars. It was so you know, what? Well, that's where the problem lies. Little Rock's very popular to go to. Are we the number one show on E? I, yeah. I got to get out of E. So do I. Oh boy, am I getting out of it. <laughs> I mean, I got to get out of E. They can't spring for a plane ticket. Well, you know, and it frustrates me because look, look what it turns into. It pisses me off. It bums me out. Like, it yeah, it bums me out. That's you know, some. That's some show we got. I mean, you could talk to Robin off the air. Obviously, she doesn't want to come in. But uh, what is it to talk about? It's money. It comes down to money, and it's all right. Well, it's not Robin's problem. Right. But I'll tell she you what. Get a budget. But she's on. I'll tell you what. Boat. She's. She's. Uh, Mindy Herman who was who was at E. Essentially, did something to my budget that completely crushed us. Yeah, and honestly, it and now they got on. this guy. What's Ted? his name? Ted Harbert, who I went to college with. He's running E now. I received a, I received frantic phone call after frantic phone call. He needed to get in touch with me. He's a smart guy to get in touch with me because we are the number one show there. Right. I uh, got to talk to you. Got to talk to you. I did get, you talk to him? So I, I said, ah, I won't be a dick. I'll call him back. I go, hey, congratulations on your job. He goes, um, yeah, um, hey, I guess it's great that um, we're going to be working together. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you know, I got to tell you. A couple of things went down here that uh, haven't been great. We used to have a really great relationship with E, and it was really terrific. And uh, things kind of got obliterated. I guess you've heard all about it from various people who work here. And, and really, the, there's just a lot of bad vibes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, look. Um, so, it's great we're working. Who would ever thought back in college we'd be working together? See ya. Oh, no. So he that was it? Yeah, he won't ever hear from me again. Oh, boy. It's like... It's like that's okay. Way to manage. Want to talk about anything? Well, obviously the guy's overwhelmed in his new job, and I understand that. I mean, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, it's a new job, and he's got to figure a lot of stuff out. But, uh, you know, I can't be ignored. I just can't get ratings for that company. And and not get anything from them. And not have a budget. I'm not looking for money for myself. Ted had to go edit. It's good to be Usher. Yeah. <laughs> Not time for the number one show for the last yeah. ten years. I got to edit. It's good to be Lindsay Lohan. Or that stupid show with the the plastic surgeon who's having trouble with his wife. Oh, yeah. Because he own. works too hard. My own. <laughs> it's good to be Usher. It's good to be Usher. Oh, <laughs> well, I tell you what. Uh, e has just that I mean, show. By the way, there was a guy who used to run that place, Lee Masters, and uh, a woman named Franche who did a spectacular job, and that's when I signed up and. Boy, have they got a long way to obliterate all the good vibes. Yeah. That uh, show, It's Good to Be, makes me so furious. I don't need to be reminded that it's good to be Brad Pitt. I had a feeling it was good to be <laughs> Right, yeah. Was, was there ever a question? Yeah, was there something I was missing? Really, man. <laughs> it's good to be Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Oh, it? Wow. Remind us some more. <laughs> Let me tune in to see why. I didn't have much hope, but uh, really, it's despicable. And I'm not, I mean, you could say Rob, Robin, it's Robin's not the one who handles that. She's got to go ask some people, too. I just know that as soon as you guys have naked women... Somehow you find the money. Somehow you, you manage to get there, Doug, personally. Yeah, somehow you manage. have more time in advance. Okay. That's for sure. Yeah. I tried to get my, my buddy tried to come in because I wanted somebody to help. And uh, the plane tickets were like... Probably about five hundred bucks. So where's your audio? Five hundred bucks no, we can. More, it was it was no no that, that's for, what yeah, you that? for like it one was person. Like Fourteen hundred or so. Why is he saying five hundred? I don't know. What is I'm this? Telling you what we looked up. Robin looked it up actually. Two uh, grand to get to Arkansas. Well, listen, I'm no, he's, pro he's probably right. It's probably that. Why did you say five hundred then? Because I went on best fares. So why can't so why can't he go on best fares? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Either. I mean, why, why can't they? Uh, maybe they got like a, I don't know, they got traders. I don't know what they do. Get a kid, an intern with a camera or something. I don't know. Get somebody. Hire a guy out in Arkansas. Yeah, call Arkansas. Don't they have people who we don't get? We're not camera? on down there. No, but this, he has TV crews. You call up, you go, hey, you got a TV crew that's free for the weekend. Hire a wedding photographer. Hey, Lester, there's an E channel on the phone. <laughs> I mean, get I'm a guy. for A this weekend. Get a guy. I mean, be creative. A guy who shoots wedding videos. We got a, a videotape, a colored midget, and some I'm other guy. I'm not disagreeing with you. Do you ever think about that? Y yes. Is, it, is there a service that tapes a, a little, little black midgets? And, and, and big dumb white guys. Yeah, I call for that. Yeah. I mean, let's let's get real. Do you know what? It's my fault. I Why? Call not to not to shoot it. It was a big expense for Beetlejuice, and we have a lot of Beetlejuice footage. It was my fault. It was not Doug's fault. Well, I just think we should have been on that one. 
Okay, well, I, I apologize. It's, right. that's, that's my fault. Well, you're taking the rap, but it's the budget, isn't it? Well, you're taking the heat, but yeah, we don't, we don't I don't have... believe you for a minute. I mean, and I mean that in a good way. No, we, we just don't have the budget to go, you know, to, to the moment's notice, go chase down different, you know. Different I don't blame you. Dogs. I blame Doug. <laughs> don't blame Doug. It's I'm blaming Doug. Calls. I'm holding Doug responsible. Doug wanted to go. Doug would have been there. Doug would have I don't believe it. it. I told him. I don't blame you at he all. He presented it the wrong way. I blame Doug. <laughs> I'm like President Bush. Once I decide something, I don't flip-flop. That's it. <laughs> Even if I'm wrong. I like that, Robin. Pull on me once. Hey, some congressman came out uh, and said that he can no longer sit quietly by that uh, Republican guy. He feels the war in Iraq is wrong. Representative Doug Baruder, oh. a 26-year member of the U.S. House of Representatives from southeastern Nebraska, has sent a four-page letter to his constituents saying he has reconsidered his previous support for the U.S. invasion of Iraq. A Republican. Yeah, and concluded that the war was a disastrous mistake. Thank goodness. Somebody speaking their conscience. I've reached the conclusion, retrospectively, he writes now, that the inadequate intelligence and faulty conclusions are being revealed. That all things being considered, it was a mistake to launch that military action, especially without a broad and engaged international coalition. Broadly hinting that the Bush administration deliberately lied and supposed Iraqi weapons of mass destruction in collaboration between Saddam Hussein and al-Qaeda, the congressman adds, Left unresolved for now is whether intelligence was intentionally misconstructed to justify military action. This is just the beginning. You're going to see more and more of this as this drags on. And, and like I said, there will probably be some hearings and uh, commissions called after they are, if they are reelected. But even if they aren't, there will be commissions called and maybe some charges. And as we look more and more impotent, like when we're standing outside this, what's this city, Fallujah? Yeah, or whatever the job. The job or yeah. hand job. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but Bukaki. <laughs> Dude, that, I mean, that's silly, though. I mean, it's easy for that guy to say now. I mean, Well, he's saying, listen, he, instead of s sitting there, like during Vietnam, a lot of guys who supported it in the beginning finally had to say it was wrong. Yeah, and it's not easy to come out when everybody's trying to paint the face that we did the right thing in your party and say, no, we were wrong. No, of course it's like you go to the track. Democrats have all you know, voted for that budget to go and do this. What they're now saying is maybe we didn't have to rush. Maybe we, we should have said, is there a coalition of countries behind this? Did we really need urgently to get into Iraq? Didn't we need to finish up the job in Afghanistan? Didn't, you know, now we're kind of caught in between two places. And we got a huge mess to fix in Iraq. And now that we we're there, it alone. and now that we're there, why are we impotent? It, it, we, it, I was watching a general saying, go in, we have gas. We could gas that whole town, put them all asleep, and drag out all the uh, enemy. Well, you have to think about this. We lost more people after hostilities were supposedly over, and we've lost even, you know, and then the rate of deaths of American soldiers has gone up after they turned over power to this interim government. Everything we do, we, uh, the soldiers, get hit worse. Tell me about Beetlejuice. I could go to the track, and I bet the five horse and the three wins. Well, yeah, I should have bet the three horse. Oh, uh, come on, you got to be smart. Silly. we got to look at things in retrospect and say, okay, what's the right move? Okay, if this wasn't the right move, how do we, what is our exit policy? But there's nothing you can do about it now. Yeah, yes, sure, there is. There's plenty you can do about it. Sure there is. You can, first of all, you got a, an election coming up. You can decide, is your commander-in-chief being honest with you, or was it his agenda all along to get Saddam Hussein out of power? And has he blown his opportunity to bring other countries into this so we can have some help? Right. Is he the best guy for the job? That's the first. You've got to always look. And it's not a done. horse race, Dopey. You, you always got to look. Well, you don't have to call him names. <laughs> yeah, come Just because he's retarded. This show, this show is not about name calling. All right, bro. Casey. Right, it's wrong. I tell me about Beetlejuice. Show. All right, what happened? Then? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no name calling. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. So my flight out is uh, Saturday morning. Saturday morning at 6 a.m. Where are your tapes? That's I'm getting to the story. Where are the tapes of your audio tapes? That's of what I'm this? saying. No. My tape player is in Arkansas. Uh, but it's, it's, why? It's been, I'll get to the end of it. Tell me, don't get to that part. Yeah, right where now. is it? Yeah, I mean, okay. why Towards the end of the appearance. Uh, it's a disaster. He wouldn't let, fly the recorder back. No. Towards the end of the appearance, I let Beale just take my recorder because he's using it to, to do his, like, karaoke. 
and I got uh, I got a microphone. So he's got it, and he's he's running around. He loses the the tape recorder, <laughs> right? That I've been working on all week. Oh, great! Airport, airplane. Dude, uh, but why not, why give him your tape? Why, where's because your he's tape? taping in case you know. I'll, I'll get went, another t piece of tape. Why are you giving him your tape? No, I, I leave the. I only had one cassette in there. It was still plenty left. The precious cassette of all your work. Yeah, That's but I'm, get, I'm getting. I'm getting it tomorrow. Don't you get nervous? Actually, yeah, I'm but getting tomorrow I'm not going to talk about it. Don't, you know what? Come back tomorrow and, and play it for me. Okay. Well, I'm talking to you today. Why? What are you? I told you that though. I told you that I didn't have it. I got. It's it's going to be. It's FedExed up to me. I should get it today. It's coming to my apartment today. <sighs> but I can tell you what happened. Explain to me again how the Senate or the Congressman is wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, your job is to have tape for me. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have your tape recorder. Why would you leave there without your tape recorder? Look, it's not. It's not Why would you hand Beetlejuice your one cassette with all your work on it? Because he, I was getting more tape. I had, I had, but. Dude, dude you've got to be kidding me. Notice they wait, wait, sent you to take care of Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is not responsible for anything. No, he's, I'm getting, that's what my you job is. You handed him your tape recorder tape. with your tape. Right. The tape. And I got, I got plenty of tape left on there. It's unused. Right. Why wouldn't you say to yourself, i got to protect that tape. Something can go wrong with Beetlejuice. He could take this tape recorder and do something weird to it. He could drop it in water. You know, why would I want him? He could hit rewind and then record. No, he doesn't know how to press the buttons. That's it's, exactly it's, the point. He does it No, I left it on. I said, right, go do your thing. You know, he's, he's out there doing his thing. All right. So, so tell me what happened. Okay. You went there. All right, so so I get there. He's still mad at me yeah. from the other day. Because, right. you know, he said, I'm not Okay. So he shows up with a plastic bag. With just a pair of underwear, no toothbrush, no deodorant, no nothing. And and Sean was supposed to pack all that. I guess it's a plastic, uh, like uh, you know, when you go to like get get food at the, at right. the, you know, the supermarket. The supermarket bag. Yeah. And what's in it? One pair of underwear. A pair of underwear. Right, right. Okay. So uh, we we show up at the airport, and I, I me I'm a genius. I mean, there's this huge line out there, right? Right. So I take him to the front. And uh, some people are yelling. I'm like, the kid, you say? I, I said, I told people he had MS. Mm -hmm. So I got right to the front of the line. <laughs> right Look at his teeth. He has MS. <laughs> so I got right to the front. And I got right to wait. Uh, yeah. Went right to the front. Um, you know, it's a couple like Stern fans in the back recognize him. You know, yelling at oh, you full ass, whatever. So, <laughs> I, you know, I go through the alarm. He gets in fine. He goes right through the alarm. Everything. I can't fine. believe you made up a disease for Beetlejuice. And once he, can't you see he's retarded? Yeah. But, but if you're retarded, you can't get special treatment. You see, Joe. All you have to do is say he's disabled. Right. Excuse me, my little friend has the flu. No, but he's, he's he can't walking stand. around. He can't stand for very long. Why well, no, He's walking around. He's fine. I can see that he was fine. Can't you, can't you, can't, how about he feel just? <laughs> hey, can't you see he's from the village of Candor? He was shrunken <laughs> when Superman came to this planet. I got, I got a retarded. I got him back to Oz. I got a retarded black midget with a bag with underwear in it. Uh, that should get you to the front of the line. He has MS. <laughs> MS. <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody asked a question. Tell me where you have MS. <laughs> <laughs> so he. <laughs> My friend has a brain tumor. <laughs> so he has MS and I'm a mess. So. <laughs> uh, I'm retarded and he has MS. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you were in charge of being this. Maybe he should have messed up your speech. I'm upset he was in charge of the tape recorder. Who? We should have sent somebody to watch both of them. So how? So so okay. So okay. then you're waiting for the plane. So no no no. So get through that. Go through the, the metal detector. He gets in fine. You know he's fine. I set it off. I guess like a zipper on my pants, something like that. And they tell me to go over. This happened to me three times. They say, all right, stand over there. I keep walking. Nobody stops me. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. There's no airport security. It's but, horrible. But it's terrific that all that money we're spending in Iraq, and we're still no safer at the airport. No, amazing. Not at all. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay, so we get to Memphis. We got a right. connection in Memphis. Um, we get out there, and we go get something to eat. We have to catch a connection at 930. So we had about an hour. So we'll go get something to eat. Right. Um, we... we uh, I'm talking on the phone, going to the exit where the, where the plane is. I'm talking on the phone, and Beetle's right in back of me. So I'm just, I'm just uh, talking. All of a sudden, I look back. He's gone. Oh. Nowhere to be found. Of course he's gone. Oh, my God. I was like, he was like a little kid. I'm like, Beetle, Beat, where you at? Beat. Oh. So throughout the whole thing, I check a separate wing. <laughs> I, I, I check every single every single. This is what Sean's thing. nightmare is. But why would you let Beetlejuice behind you? Because he was fine. He was he was talking to me. I mean, we had breakfast. I mean, everything was fine. That's what Baba Bowie said when he took care of Gary the retard. He was gone. Yeah, he, he turned his back on him for a second. Yeah, he was going to the bathroom and then boom. That's what they do. And he said, Gary, don't leave. 
for retarded people do. They leave. So what did Beatles? So now I'm freaking out because we got. <laughs> I'm retarded. I'm leaving. <laughs> Yeah, retarded people always leave. <laughs> they don't stick around. They go, what are you being retarded? They go, what am I doing? I'm retarded. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, so what do you do? So now I got like three minutes to get to the gate, and I'm starting to really get nervous. I'm like, I'm searching all over the place. I'm going to miss this flight. I'm not going to get paid. I don't know what, you know, so. <laughs> I'm not going to get paid. So finally, I hear, I, I hear him. I hear him coming out at the other side, all the way at the end of the airport. Hmm. He goes, hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, I, hey. I, I go up to him. And I said, Pete, what's, hey. what, why, what happened? And he goes, ah, you know, I had to get a book bag. He had to buy a knapsack to put his underwear in. Right. <laughs> That's what oh, took him so long. Know. And he has money to buy a book bag? How does that purchase happen? I want to see that. Yeah. And, and he, I said, Pete, how, how much did he pay? I said, how much did you pay for that? And he told me, ah, it was 35 bucks. I looked and it was a tag for 15. Right. Oh. <laughs> you know they took him. Oh, that's who's, the, who's the devil that saw him and, and said, said. Uh, it's fifteen dollars and then took thirty five off him? Right. It might have been my cousin Anthony. He Does Beetle know. have to just give you his money and you say, uh, I didn't know you it. Take it out. They gave me. He had he had a couple dollars on him. Right. Just you know, just you know, traveling money. Yeah, traveling <laughs> money. So the worst part of this is that we have five hours in Memphis. Oh, a layover. To hang out with I me mean, oh. Beetle just to hang in right. the airport. In the airport. Oh, what a, oh, oh, that's, what a nightmare! Oh, that's, five hours. What did you get paid for this? Uh, fifteen hundred. Ay ay ay. That ain't bad. You should have doubled that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so we get we get back to the to the uh, five hours. The, the bar restaurant, and mm -hmm. he decides he wants to drink. <laughs> of course. So, all right, I, I'm like, all right, I'll have a beer with Beetle. What the hell am I gonna do in, in Memphis? The people were cool, but you know, and I go to, I go to to use the bathroom. I come back, and he tells me I do order me a hamburger. All right, right. So I'm, I'm waiting there, and then uh, after a half hour, I went up to the waitress and said, did he order me anything? She goes, no, he didn't order you anything. Yeah, and if he did, I wouldn't pay attention. Ha-ha, <laughs> got you. <laughs> so so I would have bought one of those lockers and stuffed him in it, and in five hours, we turned and picked it up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> she would him. I would have I I mailed him the Little Rock. <laughs> <laughs> So we're sitting there, you know, we're having a beer, and then he's he's cursing all the pilots and calling them. There's a quote: he's calling them niggers because they left without him. Right, but he's on the plane. Yeah, he said he he kept making pretend he kept making these pretend calls on his cell phone, which Sean gave him. It doesn't work. Right, but he pretends to talk on it, and he he, he promised me that the plane was coming back to get us. Right, because he knew the guys that were flying it. Right. Um, he found you know plenty of people to party with in Memphis. Right. Uh, everybody loved him. Did people know him? Oh yeah. Totally. So we're, in other we're words, what now. you're saying is you missed yeah. the plane you were supposed to get on and you wound up having to sit hey. in in, in uh, the airport for five hours. Five hours. Right. Yeah. At a, at a bar. Look, uh, it's restaurant. Webster. <laughs> <laughs> it's that fellow Webster. Come here, you. <laughs> sit on my lap. Come here, buddy. <laughs> uh, okay, so Webster lost his teeth. Oh, and also another thing you should know is like when people ask him for pictures around there, I mean, you would think the guy was like Arnold Schwarzenegger walking through right. the airport. People right. want pictures of him, and he doesn't want it to be bothered. Right. Uh, goes, I, I, I got time for this. I don't have time. I got five hours. I don't have time. So we we get to Arkansas. This is so good. And uh, he uh, he doesn't sleep. Right. Like I wanted to take a nap before we had to go to the gig. Are you in the same room? No. They got us two separate rooms. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, no, I was loving. But I mean, how can you keep your eye on him if you're not in the room with him? Well, he was next door. Yeah, but he, he, we could get out. Would you lock him in his room? I told him to stay there, and he did. Well, no, he didn't. <laughs> he uh, he would. I was I was laying down. I was trying to get a little nap, and he would call me probably every five minutes, tell me we got to go to the gig, <laughs> which was not until ten o'clock that night. Right. And it was probably what maybe about five or something like that. I said, beat. We're just gonna relax a little bit, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna inject heroin. <laughs> uh, Can you just relax. So he, I, I think that he uh, he came into my room later. See, I would have been a nervous wreck, like Me thinking, too. "Gee, he's in the other room. What's, What's he, he doing? doing?" I couldn't relax. I wouldn't have been able yeah. to sleep. Yeah, I was it's like leaving like a wild animal in a room by itself. Absolutely. Uh. Because I still think if I had to take a nap, I'd take it in the room with him, oh. you know, on the couch. Yeah. I'd tie him to the bed and then take a nap. <laughs> hey, B, we're going to play a game. We're going to tie your feet to this bed. Who, me? I'm going to shove a sock in your mouth. 
<laughs> Wait, are you going to leave it long really? enough so if he has to go to the bathroom, he can get there? Hey, <laughs> hey Beat, I'm going to lock you in the hotel safe. I'll be back for you in an hour. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> so far, no mistakes? I'm getting there. Oh, good. Accident. 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 Yeah. So... Oh, mistake. No, mistake. Mistake. You're right. Mistake. I'm sorry. Yes. So after a while, you know, I, I'm just, I let him into to my room. He comes in, and I just smell something that's god awful. Oh, oh no. I just, does he not know how to use the toilet at all? I think he does, but I think he's he gets just, lazy. Maybe or you know. Or maybe, maybe he can't take himself. I don't well, know. life's so exciting; it's hard to stop whatever he's doing. <laughs> you know, maybe he's drinking yeah. a little bit. I don't know. Right. Look, it's happened to all of us. And was he ordering stuff in the room? No. No. He was. I guess because, you know, I mean, he couldn't sure figure out how to work the phone. I, <laughs> or maybe he was just on his play phone and he didn't realize. Right, right. I, I made sure that we ate a lot before we got hey. back to the thing. And, uh. And that was good, but now he's got the mistake. <laughs> Peter just was talking into the remote for the TV. <laughs> I want to stay! <laughs> hey, hey, by the way, your Playboy girl just showed up. Oh, really? Yeah, well, we got to wrap this story. Go uh, ahead, okay, yes. Go ahead. All right. Let me straighten up. So, uh, so That's we're, hot. we're at the gig. Mm -hmm. we, we do the thing, and people are loving him. Um, there was a contest on stage. Uh, he did like karaoke for a while. Oh, and I had, to, I had just found out that I'd do a half hour stand up. What did you? So he came in the yeah, room. Yeah, you said you smelled something. Yeah, yeah, smelled something in, in, in the room. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had to, the car was downstairs. I mean, the guy from the club was coming to pick us up. Mm -hmm. So. Did you say the words to him? I, I, I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't. I didn't want to because. I would have just said, did you have a mistake? I didn't want to put him in a pissy mood because yeah. if he was, then it would have been even. Yeah, but no, he's, just, he's programmed to take his pants off and get in the shower. <laughs> Right, it's like, a, it's like a robot. I mean, yeah. I mean, what do no, you have to do? No, but if, I, if he got mad at me, mm. then... But then he's going to go to the gig all stinking. <laughs> yeah, so let somebody else clean him. So we were in a car, and I had the window open the whole way. Oh, no, you let him go to the gig that way? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should never have kids. Oh, my goodness. No, so he's just completely... You know he crapped his pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Beat. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I really, I, I said it to myself all like, I will never have kids if this is the way it's, if this is what it's like. I don't think it's this bad. At so, least it doesn't last forever. Um, okay, so then after after the gig, we uh, we go to the promoter's house. We're going to get paid. We're going to get cash, right? So we get there. And, so uh, is he still stinking? Yeah, he, you know, he, he smelled, but you know what? It, it was, He's gotten used to it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so, I guess so. I mean, oh yeah, the mistake had not yet been corrected. <laughs> no, I, I guess because we were in the car and we were in my room and it was in a confined space. Maybe it rolled out onto the floor. Oh, yeah, that happened in Vegas. Yeah. Remember, he rolled out. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So we get to the guy's house and then, you know, wait, we get paid there and stuff like that, and, and uh, the mistake dried up. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big mistake. It oxidized. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And and you know everybody had been drinking at at the at the gig. Mm -hmm. The promoter was drinking. But did you do the thing with the three beers and then just give them like shots of uh, club soda? I'm sure people were buying them drinks. Mm -hmm. But he was wasted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah he was hammered. Mm -hmm. So we get we get back to the promoter's house and you know everybody's been drinking. So we're gonna wait for a cab. So the guy was totally cool. He's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit, hit the rack. I'm going to bed. You know, I want you guys just uh, your cab's gonna be here any minute. He called the cab. He gave us money and everything. I go to the, the bathroom. I come back. There's porno on and Pete. Is pleasuring himself? Yes. Oh! <laughs> this is back at the hotel? No, no this is at the, the guy's, guy's house. house on oh his couch. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the promoter. Yeah, yeah, the promoter. But there was nobody there except just me and him. So I walked out of the And he's bathroom. naked. No, he's got his pants just pulled down and to his knees. And was mistake in his pants? I didn't look. I didn't look. <laughs> he had a harvest moon? So he's got it down. I'm like, Pete, what are you do? Stop. Don't do that. He's like, oh, man, you know, just... You know, he, he pretended like he didn't have any shame. He didn't. He didn't care that. It, uh, I'm so. Sure, he doesn't. <laughs> he, just, he pretended like he didn't have any shame. So, n now this is the next day now, because now we go back and we we sleep. Hey. Right? The next day we take a share ride to the airport. The hotel gives you a share ride in a van, yeah. right? and you go in with other people. Did you have a clean up, Beetle? I think I cleaned. I think I cleaned. Me showered. Did you put him in the shower? I didn't put him in the shower, no. Oh, he just left him in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't do that. That's the way I would have handled it. They never sending you off with Beetle again. So is he still stinking? I mean, you had to take a whole plane ride and everything with him. Yeah, but, uh, oh, I didn't mention this. When I first got there, I did it on the, on, the, on the DL. I went to the person. I said, look, can I sit in the exit row and can you put him a little bit further back? <laughs> Subject him to someone else. Yeah, I didn't yeah. sit anywhere near him. Not at all. I didn't even sit near him. I like I could I could see him. So you subject someone else to Beetlejuice. Well, I mean. Oh my God! Can you oh, imagine? It's, it's not it's not the, it's not the duty. It's it's the breath. That's right. what it is. Yeah. That's that's the worst. But you know he must have made a duty at some point. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I mean, sure. So we take. The did he bring back the same underwear that he took out with him? I don't know what he did with it. Night and night. But he still had the book bag. Right. He had the book bag. And then he held on to it. So we take the share right to the airport, and we're in there with a couple, and they they stop off first at this cancer place because mm -hmm. they have cancer. A guy had this thing on, like one of the masks. Yeah. He had cancer. So, uh, <laughs> I, I guess uh, they you know, people are really nice down there to make small talk. And um, after you know he heard what hat with the guy had cancer, beat told them that. He too had cancer, <laughs> and that he got it from some bitch. That's what he oh, said. Oh no! And, and right in front of it was a, there was a husband and a wife there, and Pete saying that how he caught it through having sex. The <laughs> bitch. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we take the connection. We get to Detroit. Imagine when he went through security, Beetlejuice, and the, and the security guy had to check the mistake bag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we get to Detroit. We're having a great time. We're, we're like we're being good friends the whole time. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he was actually a pleasure to be with, except yeah. for the, the things I talked about. We're in Detroit, and our plane is late. It's yeah. delayed. Oh. He blames me. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what you're doing. No, he got mad at me and told me he's taking a cab home. From Detroit. From Detroit. So so he leaves the place, and I got to chase him throughout the whole airport now. Because oh my God. He won't talk to me. Right. And what do you? How do you restrain him? I said beat, and he won't even turn around and look at me. He's mad at me because um, I he said that I couldn't I couldn't fly the plane, or and I wouldn't let him fly the plane. Mm -hmm. Just like he says these crazy things. Right? right. Right. And he's taking a cab home. So I walk throughout the the whole terminal. Just trying to get him, and I'm not going to touch him and say, hey, turn around and talk to me. Mm. He's just gone. He's not even paying attention to me. Oh, my God. I, I don't even know where he's going. So what do you do? So I just... Uh, you haven't seen him in four days. No, no. no so I just... Uh, you think he can fly a plane? Do you, think, do you think he can fly a plane? Do I think he can fly a plane? Me? Why didn't you let him fly the plane? That would have been good. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, he was telling me the whole time out he should have been the one... That was that was flying it, and you know it's my fault that we're not right. getting home. So what did you say? So did I you... said, no. Look, this is what happens a lot of times when you travel. The plane is late. There's nothing we can do about it. We just got to sit here. Come on, I'll get you something to eat. Whatever, whatever you want to do. And he didn't want to hear any, anything about it. He right. Mad so, at me. so where did he go? So he just he walked around. All right. And and I had to follow him. Finally, at, there was one point where I saw him walking down. I knew it was a dead end. So I just let him walk around, and I just tried to you know. Right. He probably thought he was walking home. Yeah, no, that's what that's what he thought. Just walking around the, the dead end. Were in the dead end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so finally. And then when the plane came, what did you, you say? Hey, the plane's here. Yeah, I said, look, see, I told you, I, it was going to be all right. We're going to get home because I think he wanted to go home. Right. Yeah, yeah he said. gets homesick. Yeah. yeah. And I said, look, the plane's here. It's you know everything's looking fine now. And then then he was my friend again. All right. But it was funny. You got to see him buy cigarettes because I guess he doesn't know what kind of money he has. Right. There's no difference between like five and ten and right. stuff. Right. Right. Cigarettes down there were for four ninety five. He uh he the clerk says four ninety five. He puts down um ten, two fives, mm. and the clerk gives him one back and asks for ID. So he takes out a ten and gives it to him. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't know. Yeah, ignore my age. <laughs> yeah, but he asks for ID. Yeah, he thinks he's a kid. Does yeah. Beetle have ID? He yeah. does. Oh, okay. he does. Yeah. But you know what? He was actually he was he was good company. Yeah. I was I That's was uh, great. Besides those things, you know, and that you I would didn't do want it to again. sit with him on the plane. He was great. There's My bulldog great. is better comedy. Oh Jesus! I just can't figure out what you did with his fecal. Yeah. Fecal material. What did he do with it? All right. Good. But the thing, the thing that's good though, I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm going to have it for tomorrow. Is that when he's in that that place, we have five hours to kill. Yeah. He's drunk, screaming at the top of his lungs, cursing, talking about all the nice. women, the bitches he's banging. And next to us, there's a family of four eating, like kids oh. and stuff like that. Great. So, that's but that, that was that was my weekend. Oh, that's just great. Oh, fantastic. Yes, Angie, you're on the air. Okay. Hello, quickly, please, because I have to get to Artie's new girlfriend. Hi, Howard. My name is Angie. I sat next to Beetlejuice. I was the one subjected to Beetlejuice on the airplane from Newark to Memphis. <laughs> it's true. Casey sat on the other side. He stunk so bad. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> horrible. He had Doritos and milk for breakfast. He was like a smeagol. He was sitting there eating them like stuffing his mouth, and then he fell asleep, <laughs> snored, breathed, breathed on me. It was horrible. Uh, <laughs> did he try to I hit? I see you, you abandoned everybody. Hey. Sat on the other side of the airplane. Well, did you, uh, me. Are you a hot chick? Uh, no, I'm definitely not a hot chick. So he wasn't hitting on you the whole time, at least. He was sleeping. He, he kept falling into my seat. I have, kept having to poke him. Like, Dude, move over. Honey, if he was sitting next to me, I'd put him in a pet carrier. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you need? You need a little harness and a leash for him. I know. Why not check him? <laughs> Zola, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, it's funny. When we were down in Vegas for your show, 
We went up to Beetlejuice's room. It was 311 and a half. They had the ceiling all lowered, and the toilet bowl was in the floor. It was amazing. So I went into the bathroom to check it out. Beetle can't even make a mistake in the toilet bowl properly. The entire rim was filled with excrement. Oh, my God. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Same thing happened in my room, to be fair. Yes, Captain Jenks. Hey, good morning, Howard. You know, the funniest thing about this whole story is that this, this guy that we're all talking about, Beetlejuice, and KC gives him a tape of yeah. the show. Yeah, after all of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's just unbelievable that you would trust your, hey. tape, your, your, your tape with Beetlejuice. Joe, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, how you doing, buddy? Me and my buddy, Rat Your Knuckle, we, we jumped on a plane and flew down for the site. It was absolutely incredible. That's funny. They flew down for the appearance. <laughs> Oh, there was people that came all the way down from Memphis. Yeah, that's what he's saying. You know, Howard, the funny thing, we're all sitting in the office listening, is that Casey actually had the money in his hand to never have to do this ever again in his life. Right. right. Eat me. Well, that's the thing I want to talk about. I mean... Yeah, he could have been sitting at home listening to somebody else tell this story. Casey won... You say you won $333,000. Yeah. 330000 on GoldenPalace.com. I got so much email, first of all, people thinking that we dreamt that up so that it would be like a publicity thing for them. Right. I mean, they, I, I heard that I won, like, millions. I, I, someone sent me a thing that... It says a guy named Kyle A won $1.7 From New York. Million. Yeah. From New York. That's not you? No, well, I, mean, I don't know why they would put that down, but... Well, you won like, 330000 330000 because there's no way I could win that much... Well, I'll tell you, if you didn't miss Casey, if you missed Casey's story, he was going to get a check for four thousand dollars a week for what, a year and a half? Yeah, whatever, whatever it works out to be until they come up with the three thousand. About, about eighty weeks, it is. Eighty weeks, and he would have had all that money, and he never even got his first check. He lost all the money by the time he he was supposed to get his first check. And by the way, it is not a made-up story. It is absolutely oh, I, true. I, I swear on my life. That and you didn't really win any more than that. No, no, but you know what? You know, probably when I'm on my way up. You know what, I would go down a little bit, and I would win a little bit back, go down, come up a little bit. So maybe if they're putting that in there, it could have been a little bit more. But, you know, it was a couple times, Howard. I, I was playing um, this, uh, this. I don't even understand. Like, like when you were up to 330000 all right, and you're waiting for your check for 4000 right? No, 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 no. Because every time I wanted to play, I got to cash out. And it would take another, it takes like four days to get Oh, so it. you'd extend the four days. Yeah. So I, understand I, would, something. I would leave some in there, but then I would take it out. And then every time you'd take it out. It's four days. So when you lost like the first twenty thousand, you could have stopped and then had three hundred ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And nothing clicked there that you dropped twenty grand already. I I'm retarded. I know it. Howard, I, I live it every day, and uh, you know there's nothing that makes me sicker. He came to me at two hundred grand. That's where he was. He said I won three hundred thirty, and he told me he was at two hundred grand. And I begged him. I said, please. And he goes, I guess. Listen, I learned my lesson. Did you not, Case? Oh yeah, I, uh, in, in your mind, you were down one hundred thirty thousand dollars. You had to make back instead of right. up two hundred. Right. I, I, it's the single it's mind boggling, disgusting mind boggling. I, I think about it now, and I, I think, how could somebody do that? How, you have no how respect for money. I don't respect for myself. No. I understand it. <laughs> yeah, talk to Artie. Yeah. No. All right, I got to take a break because Artie's girlfriend is here, Sonia oh. Bright. Artie's girlfriend's not here. Artie's girlfriend is in New Jersey. At her apartment, probably. That's hot. Getting ready to teach school this fall. We'll be back right after this.